Hello students! Welcome to Grade 10 Science Lesson. And I'm your teacher, Mom Marian Soriano. Do you know why dinosaurs no longer exist today? Such extinction of dinosaurs or other organisms might cause by environmental factors or human activities. Why some animals before are very different from the animals we have now? Why some animals may look the same but have distinct difference from each other? Or others may not be related to one another, but they have similar functional features and characteristics. Let's find out more of these in today's lesson. Lesson 9. Biodiversity and Evolution What is biodiversity? Biodiversity refers to the variety of life on Earth. It includes species diversity, genetic diversity within each species, and ecosystem diversity. What is evolution? Evolution in biology is defined as the change in the characteristics of a species over several generations and relies on the process of natural selection. What do we mean by natural selection? Charles Darwin's theory of evolution states that evolution happens by natural selection, which means natural selection is the process through which populations of living organisms adapt and change. Individuals in a species show variation in physical characteristics. These variations is because of differences in their genes. Evidence of Evolution the evidence for evolution is compelling and extensive. Darwin dedicated a large portion of his book on the origin of species in identifying patterns in nature that were consistent with evolution. Keep in mind that evolution happens on large and small scales. Evolution is a change in the genetic makeup and often the heritable features of a population over time. Biologists like Darwin sometimes define evolution into two types based on scale. We have macroevolution, which refers to large-scale changes that occur over extended time periods, such as the formation of new species and groups. And microevolution, which refers to small-scale changes that affect just one or a few genes and happen in populations over shorter time scales. Remember that microevolution and macroevolution aren't really two different processes. They are the same process, evolution, but occurring on different time scales. The theory of evolution is a short form of the term theory of evolution by natural selection, which was proposed by Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace in the 19th century. The theory of natural selection is sometimes summed up as survival of the fetus. Because the fetus, or organisms, those most suited to their environment, are the ones that reproduce most successfully and are most likely to pass on their traits to the next generation. Here are the evidence that support the theory of evolution. Homologous structures Homologous feature if two or more species share a unique physical feature, such as a complex bone structure or a body plan they may all have inherited this feature from a common ancestor. For example, of homologous features, the forelimbs of human, horse, whale, turtle, frog, and bird look pretty different on the outside. However, if you look the bone structure of the forelimbs, you'll find that the pattern of bones is very similar across species. Sometimes, organisms have structures that are homologous to important structures in other organisms, but that have lost their major ancestral function, we call these structures that are often reduced in size are known as vestigial structures. Examples of vestigial structures include the tailbone of humans, the hind leg bones of whales, and the underdeveloped legs found in some snakes. Not all physical features that look alike are marks of common ancestry. Instead, some physical similarities are analogous. Analogous features means the structures are similar in organisms without shared ancestry. The structures evolve independently to serve the same purpose. Example of the analogous structure, the wings of insects, birds, and bats which they use for flying. 
In analogous, they evolve independently in different organisms because the organisms live in similar environments or experience similar selective pressures. This process is called convergent evolution. The next evidence is under molecular biology. Similarities between biological molecules can reflect shared evolutionary ancestry. At the most basic level, all living organisms share the following. The same genetic material or DNA, the same or highly similar genetic codes, the same basic process of gene expression, transcription, and translation, and the same molecular building blocks such as amino acids. These shared features suggest that all living things are descended from a common ancestor and that this ancestor had DNA as its genetic material. Present-day organisms all share these features because they were inherited from the ancestor. Embryonic Development Species that are closely related exhibit similar embryonic development. Even when in the adult stage, the organisms are quite different. For example, the embryo of fish, salamander, tortoise, chicken, and human are similar during the first stage of their embryonic development and have several homologous structures that are not present when the organisms are adults. The next evidence is biogeographical patterns that provides clues about how species are related to each other. The geographic distribution of organisms on Earth follows patterns that are best explained by evolution in combination with the movement of tectonic plates over geological time. For example, broad groupings of organisms that had already evolved before the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea tend to be distributed worldwide. In contrast, broad groupings that evolve after the breakup tend to appear uniquely in smaller regions of Earth. Perhaps the most common evidence of evolution, fossil record. Fossils are the preserved remains of previously living organisms or their traces dating from the distant past. Fossils provides information about what species existed at particular times of Earth's history. Another strong evidence of evolution is direct observation of microevolution. Some populations like those of microbes and some insects evolve from relatively short time periods and can observe directly. In some cases, the evidence for evolution is that we can see it taking place around us. Important modern-day examples of evolution include the emergence of drug-resistant bacteria and pesticide-resistant insects. Example is the E. coli evolving in a giant petri dish lace with antibiotics to show just how easy it is for bacteria become antibiotic resistant. Organisms inhabiting the Earth have changed over time. Their structures, traits, and abilities allow them to adapt and survive in their environment. Always remember that evolution through natural selection can result in biodiversity. To summarize what you have learned, multiple types of evidence support the theory of evolution. Homologous structures provide evidence for common ancestry, while analogous structures show that similar selective pressures can produce similar adaptations. Similarities and differences among biological molecules in the DNA sequence of genes can be used to determine species relatedness. Biogeographical patterns provide clues about how species related to each other. The fossil record, though incomplete, provides information about what species existed at particular times of Earth's history. Some populations, like those of microbes and some insects, evolve over relatively short time periods and can be observed directly. And species that are closely related exhibit similar embryonic development even when in the adult stage, the organisms are quite different. Always remember that evolution through natural selection can result in biodiversity. I hope you learned and enjoyed our lesson. This is Mamarian Soriano. See you in the next lesson.